Good evening, dear viewers, and welcome to a new episode of your daily live show, Hello Kuwait. This is Hibel Gahtani, and I'll be your presenter for today's episode. As usual, the camera crew has been really busy in preparing all of the segments and reports for today's episode, so hopefully you will enjoy watching with us. With that, we're going to head to one of our first reports in today's episode, which is on the achievements of Dr. Talal Abu Ghazala, knowledge worker, and then we'll have a great interview with him, so hopefully you will enjoy watching. is talking about new innovations. We make the best of it and deliver even in hard times with confidence and dynamism through our 80 fully functional offices and 180 representatives in the world's most successful economic locations. Welcome to Talal Abu Ghazali Organization, the global organization for professional services and education. For over 40 years, Talal Abu Ghazali Organization, a leader in various key fields, has pioneered the service innovation through various breakthroughs based on the vision of its founder, His Excellency Dr. Talal Abu Ghazali. Dr. Abu Ghazali is widely recognized as a philanthropic businessman at the leading edge of change. His pioneering work has been recognized by a number of global institutions, including the United Nations, World Trade Organization, International Chamber of Commerce, and the International Federation of Accountants, to name just a few with chairmanships of many boards and working groups charged with helping to shape the future. His model for success has been developed upon solid foundations of embracing and adapting to change in order to stay one step ahead of a fast-moving and evolving business world. His organization was founded as an accounting firm providing public accounting, audit, and financial services to the regional business community in the Arabian Gulf. It soon blossomed into an international multidisciplinary professional services practice spanning the full spectrum of the business and educational sectors. Dr. Abu Ghazali often referred to as the godfather of the Arab accounting profession, believes that investing in education and professional infrastructure for a well and self-regulated accountancy profession is a recipe that provides good opportunities for young graduates entering the workforce. Intellectual property has always been the core of the organization's work through Abu Ghazali Intellectual Property, Ajib, the largest intellectual property firm in the world, which works closely with governments and multilateral organizations to introduce and deploy efficient IP systems. Dr. Talal Abu Ghazali has been inducted into the IP Hall of Fame in the USA and has been chairman of the Arab Society for Intellectual Property since 1987. Ajib published the Abu Ghazali IP Dictionary in 2000, an industry first. Dr. Abu Ghazali believes access to world-class education is a human right. His long-standing commitment to education and training has resulted in establishing the Talal Abu Ghazali University, TAG Uni, a virtual gateway to the world's best education. And Talal Abu Ghazali Graduate School of Business, TAG SB. And in Bahrain, the Talal Abu Ghazali University College of Business. 
Today, thousands of students are enrolling in the best educational practices created by the organization or through its international partners. Thunderbird School of Global Management, Liverpool University, Walden University, University of Northampton, Canisius College, Amity University, Fort Hayes University, University of Scranton, British Council, UNITAR, International Training and Development Group, in Lingua Cheltenham, Ganashtim Innovative Learning, Pearson Ed Excel, Hamdan bin Mohammed E University. With a passion for technology and innovation, Talal Abu Ghazali Organization saw an opportunity to be part of this ever-changing world. Tagitop, state-of-the-art, affordable, first air production with an air of design and investment. Tag Cloud, its own e-cloud in the region. Cloud Computing Consultation Service. Tagipedia, to enrich the internet with Arabic content and preserve the history of the great Arab nation. The future vision of His Excellency Dr. Talal Abu Ghazali contributed to the birth of Talal Abu Ghazali Media, a comprehensive and fully focused service provider in media and communication for a knowledge-based society. He established three news agencies, specialized in intellectual property, information technology and education, members of the World Association of Newspapers and News Publishers, WAN IFRA, more than one million visitors per month, Media Academy, Tag Media Consultancy, Talal Abu Ghazali International Press and Publishing. And we are back, dear viewers, after that amazing and, uh, let's say, rich report when it comes into the great knowledge uh, of the work of His Excellency, our guest, uh, Dr. Talal Abu Ghazala, founder, ABD, chairman of Talal Abu Ghazala um, organization. So really happy to have you again here when it comes into Halakweb program. My pleasure. So, uh, of course, Your Excellency, when it comes into, let's say, the great achievement that you've been working on so far, uh, also when it comes into, uh, uh, again, uh, your uh, greatest, let's say, achievement when it comes into uh, publishing and issuing your, your upcoming book in November, which is, of course, uh, the uh, title of, let's say, A Brave Knowledge uh, World. And maybe you'd like to tell the audience more about, let's say, uh, the book, the chapters that are going to be presented in it. Um, this is the second book yes. I produce as a full book. I have many articles and studies and it's, uh, it's research documents. But uh, the first book I wrote was uh, Stories from a Life Blessed by Suffering. Mm -hmm. I am a great believer that suffering is a blessing. Yes. And that uh, if you look at suffering in the right, from the right angle, you can turn it into a great uh, pleasure. Mm -hmm. and happiness. Uh, now that is talking about my life uh, in the past and yes. I'm an old man. At, uh, at my age now I wanted to, to produce based on all the studies and I'm, in, I'm a student. Mm -hmm. I study like any student uh, but my study is concentrated in the field of knowledge mm -hmm. meaning intellectual property and information technology and telecommunication. Um, what I wanted to do is to produce a book for our children, our students, our youth, telling them what the world will look like and what our life will look like in the future mm -hmm. as a result of this fourth revolution, which is the knowledge revolution. Mm -hmm. And so the book is under this title, Brave Knowledge World. This knowledge world 
will be completely different from the world we're living in. It is not a development. For the first time, this, this process of history, which is an accumulation or a development from period to period, from strategy to strategy, from stat stage to stage, all of a sudden we have a revolution. And we will have a new world which is completely different from the world we're living in today. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, to create the interest and the motivation in our young generation to, re to understand that this is what's coming and this is what they have to study and concentrate on so that we don't miss this future world. Yes. So, um, uh, Your Excellency, after talking about, let's say, uh, knowledge and the upcoming world, as you mentioned so far, and, and uh, of course, uh, talking about the book itself, um, of course, each book has, let's say, uh, 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 let's say a, a reason for, for, for it to be created and, and a readers for it itself. So, um, to highlight, let's say, the most important or, let's say, the, the, the uh, people that you're targeting when it comes into the readers. In addition to what I said, which is targeting the, the youth, the, gen the children, um, I'm targeting also decision makers and policy makers so that we f at least, uh, and this is not a book for sale, it's offered for free. Yes. It's not a document that I'm marketing for mm -hmm. commercial purposes. It, uh, it is a gift to humanity. Yes. And it will be published uh, hopefully in uh, November. Yes out of, uh, by, Amer by uh, Oxford Express, where I will be speaking. I will be speaking at Oxford University yes. on November 2 on this subject mm -hmm. and addressing the, the f this future. And at the end of the book, I have a section called A Day of a Human Being in the Knowledge World. Mm -hmm. How will I live if I lived or how would my children live in the year 2060? or 70, yes. since the moment he wakes up to the moment he goes to bed. It's a completely different life, yes. completely different. It yes. has nothing to do with what you and I are living mm -hmm. today. Yes, and it's really amazing again to see that as you mentioned now, you're talking about, let's say, uh, let's say another dimension, uh, let's say another world that uh, everyone is going to, let's say, face in the future itself. Uh, to have that, uh, let's say, um, knowledge and to have that imag imagination to see uh, the world from that perspective is really great and, of course, a really amazing thing. Uh, to highlight for the youth themselves, of course, uh, because we know that the youth is the bone of the societies and bones in each country. So. Now, when it comes into, let's say, presenting the youth, and uh, do you believe that they have uh, what it takes for them to change the whole country to a new perspective, to a new world, and so on? Children? The youth, yes, children. Children are the agent of change. Mm -hmm. It is unbelievable how this knowledge revolution is built on the capacities and abilities of children. Mm -hmm. Think of any baby in his mother's, on his mother's lap. As he is drinking his milk, with the other hand, he takes her, her gadget, whatever it is, a, a mobile, a tablet, etc., and he starts playing with it, teaching himself. Mm -hmm. Most children in this knowledge age are self-taught. Indeed. And when he gets off the lab and starts walking, he is already a knowledge citizen. This is what we call, the UN, by the way, is now issuing annual statistics, ITU of the UN, is issuing statistics of what they call digital citizens in every country, how many? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, this is the measure of the future of the country. Mm -hmm. It is not anymore the, the capital or the wealth indicator it's how many digital citizens you have as a ratio of the country. That ratio determines what the future of the country is. These children live in a world and they, ha they are luckier than me. I am what is known as a digital, a, a digital host. Yes. I, because I not, was not born a digital citizen. I learned it, although I learned it early. My first course on what is what may be called knowledge 
was in 1965. Yes. Many years before you were born. <laughs> yes. So I, I, uh, I followed up this revolution and that is why, I, because of my interest, uh, I was lucky and I was privileged that it, Kofi Annan, God bless his soul, yes. uh, elected me to chair, to co-chair the uh, UNICT task force, which formulated the strategies for this future that we are in today, which mm -hmm. is the past. Mm -hmm. In 2001, what we're living in was the future. Yes. Now, what I'm doing now is predicting the future. And I always believe that uh, the best way to predict the future is to make it. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm tr alerting the Arab world and the international community. It's going to be out in English and Arabic, by yes. the way. Yes. And my objective is to, to highlight the reality of the future. It's not dreaming. It's not imagination. I was privileged once on a panel with uh, Bill Gates when I asked him, what, in, one, in one word, what do you call this century? Mm -hmm. Not the decade, the century, the century, the whole century. If you want to give it one word description. Mm -hmm. He said two words, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. The rest of the century, he said, will be the creation and the result of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Everything in our life will change as a result of artificial intelligence. Therefore, what I'm trying to to also highlight for every decision maker, whether it's a university, and by the way, I, I know I would love to talk about our, our new university, our new university, which is unique in the world. Yes. But um, whether it's universities, whether it's research centers, governments, ministries, ba homes, everything, everything will be in future. AI based, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence driven. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I am focusing in this chapter, in this book, it's written in chapters. Yes. How will this brave knowledge world affect education? Mm -hmm. How will it affect government? Mm -hmm. What kind of business community we will have? Infrastructure, yes. biology, technology, space, Everything, everything. So chapter by chapter, I try to predict the future under the impact of the knowledge revolution. Yes. And of course, it's really important, as you mentioned now, to highlight all of these aspects. And as you said, again, uh, the better way to know the future is to uh, think about it and Sorry. to imagine it. Because um, not, uh, let's say, a lot of people have that, let's say, knowledge in creating and imagining and trying to figure it out. And we need these kind of, let's say, curriculum and uh, these kind of uh, books to educate the youth when it comes into the upcoming future. Like, let's say, for instance, if we compare uh, certain let's say uh, materials of education nowadays mm -hmm. um, people let's say students are uh, really smarter and they're like than the uh, teachers yes than the teachers and they're like this is not the future this is what's of happening course. now uh, we and are and seeing but, this but technology you, I, I, I want to I want to focus on a very important point that you just uh, mentioned let me emphasize to everybody who's hearing me mm -hmm. that everything you're brain, your mind, can imagine is real. Mm -hmm. This is a fact. Yes. And you can judge it by going through the, through the history of our lives when we were thinking of how to create something that flies. Yes. Now I'm going to fly non-stop or direct to, to New York tomorrow morning. Yes. Um, and that's just like driving my car. Before yeah. driving the car, we were thinking, how can we have something which moves on wheels? Yes. And it became a reality. So anything that the mind can imagine is a reality awaiting implementation. Yes, indeed. Yes. So, of course, uh, when it comes also talking about education itself, maybe you'd like to highlight more about the university, of course, itself, and how is it going, and all of the criteria that includes it. I believe that the world is moving as a result of this knowledge revolution. Mm -hmm. That's one chapter on mo transformation from the civil state to the innovation state. Yes. The future will not be about 
civil rule and management of the country. Mm -hmm. It will be about innovation. Mm -hmm. The role of government will be to create an environment for innovation, full stop. Mm -hmm. The innovation process will take care of how to have better health through innovation, how to have better education through innovation, how to have better security through innovation. So everything is going to be innovation. That is why we are starting as of next month. Yes. The Talal Abu Ghazali University College of, of innovation. innovation. Yes. This college has a very simple principle. Mm -hmm. We don't need any more graduates who are good, knowledgeable students. Mm -hmm. Who, are grad who graduate to look for jobs. Mm -hmm. This is over. In fact, you have seen, and I said this, I said this at my uh, speech uh, at Harvard yes. on 26th of May and at MIT on 25th of May. And I'll say it at Columbia and I will say it at Stanford and I will say it at Oxford. I have a schedule yes. of speech speeches, scheduled speeches to, to universities. The mission of universities had to change from graduating good, knowledgeable students mm -hmm. to graduating inventors, mm -hmm. creators, innovators. That is why great names like Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs, etc. Yes. There is a whole list of them who are called dropouts, mm -hmm. who left university. Yes. They did not fail. The university failed. Yes. And I said this at Harvard. And I said, don't you realize that you need to change and start graduating inventors who instead of graduating to look for jobs, graduate to start a business and create jobs for others. Mm -hmm. This is the concept of this Talal Abu Ghazali Innovation University. A student will not graduate by an exam, he will graduate by an invention. Mm -hmm. And if you don't invent, it's like if you s fail in the exam. Yes. So th the concept is invent. Mm -hmm. You are here to be guided, tech guided. We don't teach mm -hmm. because every knowledge that a teacher wants to teach is already there on the net. Yes. You don't have, to, you don't ha you can have nothing, no teacher in the world, no person, whether it's a teacher or an ordinary person like myself can add anything new which is not on the net. Mm -hmm. Therefore, our teachers are tech advisors. Mm -hmm. They help students in how to become inventors and creators. Yes. All based on ICT. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about inventions and creations, ICT based. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's the really, let's say, important thing and matter to be focusing on. Because as we now uh, talking about the generation themselves, the, the kids, the toddlers that are still growing, as you mentioned, they have the bottle aside and they have the technology aside, learning by themselves and knowing Absolutely. how to do everything. Okay. So focusing on, let's say, their talent to be creators, to invent new things that, of course, will lead to a better future okay. is the most important thing Absolutely. in matter itself. Absolutely. So we can say that these are, let's say, the opportunities that the university is giving to these learners and yep. to these students themselves. Absolutely. Yes, so it's really, of course, an amazing work in, indeed. But also when it comes into, let's say, the reflection of people and, and, and some of, let's say, maybe the old generation comparing to the new ones, maybe find it um, really challenging. Don't you think so when it comes into presenting it this way? No, and I, I, you know, it's an it's interesting question because we lived in a real world. Mm -hmm. This real world is going to be the Stone Age yes. in 50 years' time. Indeed. Yes. People in 50 years' time will, will, will not be able to imagine how we lived in, the, in this age which we think is great. Mm -hmm. They will look at it with such pity and despise. They tell them, how could they live this way? How could they ha how, why did they have to switch on the light? Why did they have... To, to bring the mic closer to them, why did, have to, why did they have to put a wake-up call? Why Everything is yes. going to be different. Now, that the world we live in, our children will still see it until it fades, but while at the same time having another life on the internet. Mm 
-hmm. When they connect, they are in another world. So they have the advantage of two worlds. They're still with us. Mm -hmm. I was one day talking at a family gathering of my mm -hmm. family. And our grandchildren were not joining the discussion. Mm -hmm. So I said, why don't you join us? They said, we are. They were talking to each other on the net while sitting with us. They were listening to us. Yes, and, and they were debating what we're saying. Yes. So, so to give an example of how they have two lives and this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, this f real life will always be there, but in different, in, 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 a, in a diminishing way. Yes. Because we will be talking more to machines mm -hmm. than we talk to each other. Yes. And we're moving into some from the internet to the internet of things. Mm -hmm. The internet of things is the internet that is used by human beings and by things. Mm -hmm. My computer or laptop or, or, or mobile will use the internet like I use it, without me. Mm -hmm. the, the, the machine will become as smart as you are. Yes. And at the same time, you will become as smart as the machine. In other words, your, your cap capacity, memory-wise, ability to analyze, ability to to, to uh, uh, search data, like a, a computer. Our mind will become like a computer, and the computer will become like our mind. Yes. In, in, in other words, what I'm saying is, as a result of these Im Im inventions, knowledge inventions, each of which triggering a number of other inventions, mm -hmm. um, technology only moves forward, mm -hmm. and very exponentially. So when I invent something today, that invention out of it will come 10 in other inventions. Yes. So the, the, the velocity of innovation is, is much faster under the knowledge age. Yes. Therefore, what I'm, what I'm saying is, no, we will have still our human, and in fact, one on one occasion, and I keep referring to, to Bill Gates, um, he was asked, uh, but how did this impact our social life? How we become less human. Mm -hmm. He said, were we more human when, when we were in caves, yes. eating each other like cannibals? Indeed. But it has nothing to do with that. The human relationship is something, and the, the is virtual relationship, which will become the real mm -hmm. world. Yes. Now, what we call today the virtual world will be the real world. Yes, indeed. I couldn't agree more on that, of course. And the matter, uh, indeed, itself is actually happening within now. As you mentioned now, people are going to talk to machines. And, and we can see in some restaurants that they are providing uh, machines for us to take orders and, and to of pay course. and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's actually happening from now on until the future itself. But I have a personal you don't, question. You don't, have, you, don't have to, you don't have to anymore have a machine to order. Yes. The, the, virtu the artificial intelligence, knowing your taste and your style, when you go into the restaurant, it orders it for you. Yes. <laughs> yes, that would be really great indeed. But like, I have a personal question. Sure. In your future, when it comes into uh, the, the, the brave knowledge world itself, is there going to be teachers still? Or teachers are going to be, let's say, as you mentioned, in the virtual reality world? But not only teachers, yes. many, 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 many businesses, yes. many professions will fail. There will be no doctors. No doctors. Because yes. my genetic map will be at the pharmacist. Mm -hmm. When I have a flu, the, 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 uh, uh, based on my genetic map, the pharmacy will make the medicine that is applicable in my case. Yes. Because as, as, as a, a chairman of one of the largest in pharmaceutical companies told me, mm -hmm. he said 80% of what we produce as medicine is only sedative. Mm -hmm. It doesn't treat. Because nobody needs the same medicine like the other person. That's yes. why you see some people say, I prefer Panadol. Panadol. Another person says, no, I like aspirin. Yes. It's not a question of taste. It's a question of that my... What genetic map is different from your genetic map. Yes. So the, the doctor will be the pharmacist who has your genetic map. Yes. Accountants. Why do I need an accountant? Mm -hmm. I started as an accountant in 1960. Mm -hmm. 
I can tell you that in, in less than 20 years, there will be no accountant. Why do we need an accountant when the accounting standards, which I formulated or I was part, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I did in my life was yes. to, to serve on the board formulating accounting standards for the world. Mm -hmm. You can put them in a program, put the program into the computer of the client, and the program will do the audit. We yes. don't need an auditor. Yes. <laughs> the, of course, teachers are not going to be needed. They will be, become tech advisors. Yes. The, the teacher will, do, will be escalated to a higher rate yes. in being a tech expert on mm -hmm. how to invent and to teach students how to invent. Mm -hmm. So the change, there will be a change of many of these jobs that we're doing today will become the responsibility of robots. Yes. Yes. And robots, robots are much better than human beings in so many things, in doing so many things at, at the moment already. Yes, indeed. Yes. And of course, again, it is a future that's going to be suitable for the new toddlers and generation that are, let's say, really fed with technology and really using it all in their life, let's say, from a really young ages until now, of course, indeed. So also, again, to our viewers, when it comes into, of course, um, uh, to our episode of Hello Kuwait, we'd like to remind you, if you're just tuning in, that we are here uh, interviewing our uh, guest and uh, His Excellency, Dr. Talal Abu Ghazala, and presenting, of course, all of his amazing works and achievements. So also when it comes into now talking about the new uh, technical techniques and methods that are presented at the university itself, how will it help the learners to face the stress and all of the, let's say, um, a world, uh, uh, let's say, challenges itself? You know, we, we, we're, we're going to be teaching new subjects. Yes. And we're very lucky and very happy that uh, our Ministry of Higher Education, Jordan, accepted this novelty in, 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 in programs. For example, in addition to artificial intelligence as a subject, robotics as a subject, machine learning, mm -hmm. to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Machine learning, as compared to human learning, is a new technology also enabled, enabled by artificial intelligence. But in machine learning, you can see how you can also study another subject which you be teaching, which is big data. Big data today is a problem. In the knowledge world, I, I remember that in 1968, I attended a conference in, South, in, in San Francisco on knowledge. And knowledge at that time was intellectual property protection. And this is how we became, because that meeting triggered, triggered in me interest in intellectual property. And I said, intellectual property. So I had to study it. Now we can proudly say that we are the global leader in intellectual property. But at that conference, they were talking about how wonderful it is that human knowledge is duplicated every two years. Mm -hmm. Every two years, the wealth of knowledge increases twice. Mm -hmm. and, they, and we thought that it was wonderful. Today, every two days. Mm -hmm. This is the result of big data. If you yes. want to look for something, you don't know where to go. You don't know how to mine the data. Data mining is a problem. So we are machine learning using this technology helps in this wonderful world of knowledge, huge world of knowledge, mm -hmm. in, in, in being able to search and surf in this ocean of knowledge. At the same time, there is the, this, the art of fusion. Mm -hmm. Fusion means collecting information from different sources yes. and assembling it in a way that it becomes useful yes. for whatever subject you are addressing. So it, it's, it's, another, it's another world. We are, when we used to study, we used to have a book teaching us what geography is, yes. what th history is. Now, for example, and by the way, if you're talking about education, it is not the U.S. nor Great Britain that is leading the transformation process in education. It's countries, Finland and, and other countries. Mm -hmm. Finland doesn't teach any more languages, mm -hmm. for example. It's required, not required at school to teach language because yes. it, it, it claims, and I agree, that a child who uses his finger on, this, on, the, on the gadget yes. 
He is writing and reading. Why do you need to ha give him a chalk and ask him to write on the blackboard? Yes. Well, he is. Th this is this is reading. This is reading and writing. <laughs> in 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 in, uh, in in teaching subjects. Yes. The schools are not required to teach subjects. Mm -hmm. They teach models. Mm -hmm. For example, instead of teaching geography, history, etc., you take the, as a, a model the European Union. What is the geography of the European Union? What is its history? What is its economy? What is the European Union political structure, etc.? Something that is by model and yes. not by subject. Mm -hmm. I forgot all the history I, I studied at school. Obviously, I cannot remember dates when Napoleon was was in war, born and when he fought yes. and what year he won. It's, it's gone. But when you learn by method, by example, it stays and it becomes more useful. Yes, indeed. I really couldn't agree more on that point that you just illustrated. It's really amazing how we all, let's say, see that perspective when it comes into education itself. Of course, we're going to continue more, but we're going to head to a report on the Summit Middle East and then we'll be back again to continue. Guard have six goals and targets uh, enhancing readiness and mission. We have to, in order to have this, we have to have a very good inspection in order to ensure readiness. I mean readiness in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the manpower, readiness in, uh, in the equipment, readiness in the vehicles. And this is, you cannot inspect it unless you have a timeline for it. So if we say that we will proceed to this task, then in five minutes, the people should be ready to move. And this is being calculated during different time and interval. Now, what I think we need to focus on is to learn from the U.S., and I'm a student of the U.S. experience, is to refocus on the ability of the military in the innovation field. And I'm talking worldwide. This is why um, as I said, I have been working closely with many think tanks and experts, and I've been, I'm the, I have had the honor of addressing Harvard University in, on May 15 of this year, uh, on, on May 16, I'm sorry, and on May, May 15, I addressed MIT, and I leave Kuwait directly to the U.S. to address Columbia University. First of all, my name is uh, Ahmed Al Ghabwan. I'm the business developing manager of uh, Toraya Telecommunication here in Kuwait. Uh, Thraya Telecommunication actually is an Emirates-based company and uh, we are cover approximately 70% of worldwide. Uh, we are providing a satellite communication. So in, if you are in any uh, rare area like middle of desert, middle of sea, we are the only people who can provide for you a communication in this area. Most of our people is like uh, hunting or fishing. This is for individuals. And as a ministry, we are covering like Ministry of Defense, Foreign Affairs, Interior, and this is why we are here in this event uh, for the Ministry of Defense to provide for them solutions and uh, also equipment.
back, dear viewers. If you're just tuning in, this is your daily live show, like Kuwait. With us, we'd like to welcome again our guest, His Excellency Dr. Uh, Talal Abu Ghazala, founder, ABD uh, chairman. Uh, of course, when it comes into uh, the, of course, uh, Talal Abu Ghazala organization. Of course, you've seen the report about the C4 uh, um, ISR, uh, the Summit uh, Middle East uh, conference that you attended. Maybe you'd like to highlight uh, on that conference itself. Uh, I was um, happy to participate in this important conference yesterday and today. Um, I was the keynote sp speaker and I focused on the innovation in the military in mm -hmm. uh, industry. Yes. We have to remember, and I tried to highlight this, that the military were behind many of the great inventions. Mm -hmm. Most of the great and important inventions in America came out of the military and then went into the commercial use. I can name one which is the most important invention in history, the internet. The internet is a product of the military. Yes. So there is a great opportunity in the military to be innovative. And, and in today's presentation, I emphasize that like the U.S. led the creation of this most valuable asset in history, there is nothing more valuable in the, in the history than the Internet. Yes. And I cannot put any value on it. Trillions, hundreds of trillions, I can't, although we are the leading experts on IP mm. valuation. But um, today I was focusing on the need, and I called on the U.S., for the need to lead an exercise on globalizing artificial intelligence innovations. Yes. This is fragmented now. There are tens of thousands of experts and engineers all over the world, mostly in America and in China. But we, there is no place which is accumulating this great knowledge mm -hmm. to make it into one useful asset like the internet is for the use of humanity yes and i'm very saying this because i'm very worried mm -hmm. very worried mm -hmm. if the world is fragmented into people who have access to artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and people who don't because artificial is intelligence is not about changing things and machines to become smart. It's also about making human beings smarter. Mm -hmm. So we will end up and better health and better physique and better power and better life and better uh, more uh, life span. So this will end up, the world will end up by having human beings who are superior, not by knowledge or wealth, but by physique, yes. by physical power and mental power superior yes. to others, which is not fair. We yes. will have two, two kinds of human beings. Yes. Therefore, we need a global in initiative, a global project, obviously led by the global leader, the US, mm -hmm. in, in having this global exercise and this global asset and this global invention mm -hmm. for the benefit of every human being to avoid this gap which is going to be the most serious gap. It's not like the wealth gap or the poverty gap. Yes. It is human gap. Yes. We'll have inferior and superior human beings. This is alarming. Yes. And therefore, I was focusing today on this, and I think the military and the U.S. can and should do something about it. But this conference basically is very important, and it is... It, it highlighted uh, yes. what are the technologies available in various fields of smart weapons, smart uh, technology. And we are very proud as Talal Abu Ghazali organization that we have a partnership with the Jordan Armed Forces yes. on innovation in the military in Jordan. Yes. And we have a joint board for innovation in Jordan. We would like to see that in every country. Yes. I would love to see every Arab country Yes. have this joint exercise with think tanks, universities, researchers, or private sector companies to 
get together and develop the technologies in the field of innovation in the military and of course in other fields. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your time and for having, uh, let's say, this interview with us. It's really uh, amazing to have you again here. And of course, we wish you all the best luck when it comes into your uh, trip tomorrow. And hopefully, we wish you all the success indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thank you. And with that, dear viewers, we're going to head to one of our reports and then you'll be back again. So hopefully, you'll enjoy watching. Hi everyone, my name is Azian and I love Azian Club and my best uh, club is art. My name is Zara and I love Azian and my favorite subject is art and I love how it feels like I come here every Thursday and I love to have play with my friends at Azian. Hello, my name is my name is Az uh, my name is Maali. Uh, I am in Azian Club. If you want to have fun, just join join us. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dora and and I'm 10 years old. I love Azian Club because it's so nice and so amazing. My name is Dalal and now I'm in the subject of Quran in the Azian Club. My name is Wafa. I enjoy Nadi Azian's club. My name is Modi Brisley and I'm an educational uh, teacher at Azian Club. Azian Club is an educational club where you can learn. Uh, there are four classes, Quran, there are also educational games class. You can come and join. Our motto this year is peace and love. Uh, it's a very comfortable atmosphere where you can learn comfortably and in a fun, uh, fun way. Uh, any questions, any further instructions you would like to learn more about our club, you can contact us by Instagram as Young Club. And thank you. After that amazing interview that we had, dear viewers, with our amazing guest talking about the world of knowledge itself, hopefully that, let's say, you gained all of the power when it comes into having your dreams to come true because whatever you imagine is possible to become true. Until, let's say, uh, our next episode, hopefully you'll enjoy the evening. See you again tomorrow at 6 p.m. Until that time, have a great evening. <laughs>